Hey guys, and welcome back to the Morning Podcast with Michael and Aaliyah. And today we have a special guest in our principal, Mr. Roth. Good morning. Um, good morning, Mr. Roth. So um, the first topic we're going to talk about is the breaking news throughout Narstown, and that is the retirement of Dr. Samuels. So last week on May 9th, Dr. Samuels announced that after 10 years as Narstown Area School District Superintendent, she will be retiring at the end of July. She has been here in her position since 2008. She began teaching in Delaware before working in the school district of Philadelphia, gradually working up the position to, up to the principal position and then to regional superintendent. So with this news, Aaliyah, what is your first reaction? I was actually pretty shocked because I thought that she's going to be here until I graduate. I was like waiting for the speech next year and then like the news broke and I was like, whoa, what actually happened like while I was still here? So I was like, my reaction, I was just shocked that it happened while I was still here. Like, I expected my little brother, he's like in third grade. So I was like, maybe when he gets in middle school or high school, she'll retire. But I didn't think I was going to be here for it. Especially after she got her extension last year, when she got the three-year extension. Mm -hmm. I was kind of surprised that she got that in the first place. But then when uh, when I heard this at first, it was through my mama. And she was she was telling me, and I was like... I was like, nah, that, you're you're lying to yeah, me. Like, I thought it was. A joke. <laughs> I, I thought it was. I thought she was lying to me, and then she was like, no, for real, for real. And so when I was just surprised. Right. So, um, Mr. Roth, you obviously knew knew about this probably earlier than everybody else. So, um, how do you think this is? What direction do you think the school district's going to go after this? So it's it's interesting. You know, one of the things that drew me to Norristown was the fact that they, you know, that there was such a good leader here for such a long time. You know, the average superintendent is only there in a school district for like two and a half years. So 10 years is unheard of. And that kind of stability, you know, is, is a great thing to have. So that, uh, you know, and I had asked around prior to coming here and some folks I'd worked with before said, oh, yeah, I know. I know Dr. Samuel. She's top notch. And so I said, OK, great. You know, and uh, so her leaving, you know, was a surprise to me, too. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I'll be sorry to see her go. I think she is a great leader. I think she keeps kids first. Um, but I think at the same time, you know, Mr. Dormer is uh, is going to do a great job. You know, he's he's a good guy, good forward thinker, and uh, someone who I enjoy working for. So, so talking about that, did, did he influence your decision to come here at all, or did you talk to him prior to? So I didn't really talk to him prior, uh, but it definitely influenced my decision. You know, there's I've worked for a lot of great people, um, and Mr. Dormer was definitely one of them. And uh, you know, him and I had a really good relationship back in our Upper Darby days, and. Um, I just felt like if this was a place that he liked, it was a place that I would like to. All right. Good. So the 2017-2018 school year was Mr. Rawls' first year at North Center High School following the departure of our principal, Jeff Smith. Before he came to the high school, Mr. Roth worked at Upper Darby High School for 14 years, and four of those years were spent as principal. NASD's new superintendent, Christopher Dormer, worked with Mr. Roth for the first 10 years of his career and recommended that Mr. Roth apply to become principal of our high school. Mr. Dormer, Mr. Dormer described Mr. Roth as passionate, collaborative, and innovative. Throughout the school year, Mr. Roth has shown that he is just that. From athletics to theater events, Mr. Roth is constantly showing our school and our students the support that they need. In 2017, an incident occurred at Upper Darby involving two students who brought a loaded gun and marijuana to school. One student was an 11th grader and the other was a 12th grader. When the students got off the bus, Mr. Roth told the 11th grader to move aside while the 12th grader tried to give someone else the box that carried the drugs and the money or sorry the drugs and the gun an altercation occurred and the 11th grader ended up punching a police officer in the face the situation was quickly handled and no one got hurt mr roth and the police force did exactly what should have been done to keep everyone in the school <coughs> safe just like a good principal should mr roth has made many changes in our school for the better from the new late policy to fighting rules and consequences many people can tell that he has done good things in our school this school year so, Mr. Roth, were you in any way nervous about coming to our school, like, right in the principal slot, like, not knowing anybody or anything? I think the only thing I was nervous about was, you know, I, I started at Upper Darby as a student teacher. Um, so, I literally grew up there. Uh, mm -hmm. So, this was my first time ever working in a school that I didn't know everybody really well. Um, but I was also excited, too. You know, I was right. excited that, you know, there's a lot of good things going on here, and I like that there's a strong sense of community here in Norristown, and I just wanted to be a part of it. Um, well, first off, I would like to thank you, because the change you have made here is incredible. Um, that's from my point of view. Um, ever since you've take, taken over, it's, it's been a different atmosphere, and it's 
it feels better to come here. But um, talking about that, um, have you seen a change with all your rules that you've implemented from the from the students wise? I think, the, uh, to be honest, I haven't. I can't say that I've seen a change because mm-hmm. I've seen great things from day one. Right. So. I don't know what it was like before. And part of what drew me here was that there were good things that were happening, right? Um, But when I got here, talking to students, talking to teachers, talking to families, everybody just kind of wanted the same thing. Everybody said that they liked it here, but it seemed like they thought they were the only person that liked it here. So we just have to keep working on pride. And that, I think, is maybe that's the biggest change that I've seen is more things like that. I don't think that has as much to do with me as it does with everybody that's in this building every day. So, we talked about the incident with the loaded gun at Upper Darby, so would you mind talking about how it was dealing with an issue like so serious as a gun being brought to a school? So, one of the things that comes with being a school administrator is you deal with a lot of rumors. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think one of my greatest responsibilities is to look into each and every one of them just to make sure, right? You'd be amazed how many times I have gone and searched a kid's school bag or a locker or whatever because they joked about having a gun in school. That's why when people talk about our school safe, I feel like they're pretty safe because I'm usually the one that's looking into these things. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll be honest, driving to work that day felt a little different. Um, I don't know why, I just in the back of my head kept saying, hmm, maybe this is going to be something different. Um, I knew the young man when he got off the bus, you know, and I asked him to stop and he the look on his face told me everything I needed to know. Um, But I think it was a great example of good planning and good people you can trust getting you through something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, as scary as that was after the fact, there was never a time where I thought any kid was going to get hurt. Um, And at the end of the day, when I reviewed it, when our staff reviewed it, when we reviewed it with the police, that was the thing that we felt good about was, you know, we spend a lot of time thinking about things like this. Never did I think I'd have a loaded handgun in my hand that I took off of a kid. Right. But that being said, we were safe. And the thing that I was proud of was when that broke on the news, the comments online, the comments on Facebook, the comments on the news were people talking about how good our school was. Mm -hmm. And I think when you think about that at a school like Upper Darby or Norristown, where our reputation is not not what it should be. Sometimes it takes a bad incident to see how much people love where you are. And I think we here at Norristown just have to do a good job of getting that message out before something bad happens. Yeah, definitely. So on the lines of like safety or violence or just like the atmosphere around the schools, do you think that times have changed when you were in high school to now being the principal in high school and seeing how like students act now? Yes and no. I, I think... You know, I, I went to Academy Park High School, which is down in Delaware County. It's, it's. Um, I think Academy Park's reputation is a lot like ours, right? Mm-hmm. It's a great school, great school. I, oh man, I had great teachers. Um, I'm not going to say that I never saw a fight in school. Right. Um, I can't say that I was never in a fight in school. Not that I'm proud of it. Um, but I think kids are kids, and I think sometimes we forget that. And I think sometimes we forget that because there are these really awful things that happen that, you know, I was in high school before Columbine happened. Um, so, you know, I was never, I never had a fear of somebody coming and shooting in the school. Um, I think we're much more conscious of those things now. And I think social media changed everything. Um, you know, the arguments that used to happen in a hallway or outside of school happen online now. And then when people get face to face, they've said everything there is to say. Mm-hmm. And so they go straight to violence, which is really unfortunate. And we collectively have to find a way to change that. But that's also not a Norristown problem. That's an American problem. And yeah. so we have to work on that outside of this community, too. Definitely. Um, so talking about this, um, you're, the school year is almost over. So how do you think the first year went, and where do you see the school going in the future? I love it here. I love it. There's nothing not to love. Um, you guys are awesome, and not just you guys sitting at this table, but you know the collective 700 students in this school. Um, the teaching staff is great. The community is great. I think we can, there are no limits on the success that we can experience here. We have everything that every school wants. We have, you know, intelligent students. We have students with character. We have hardworking teachers. We have leaders in the district that want us to do well and will bend over backwards to help us. I I think, you know, where can we be in, in five years? You know, hey, look, we 
we just got our fifth straight, you know, bronze medal, right, from mm -hmm. U.S. News and World Reports. So it's time to move on to, you know, maybe a silver or a gold, right? Because we're not a bronze medal school. You know, we're we're top notch, and we have to continue to think of ourselves as top notch. And uh, the fact that it says Narstown outside is a point of pride, not something that holds us back. Good. So just the last thing right now, um, how do you feel about schools like in the whole nation and their safety following so many gun incidents and threats that go on? I think there is nothing worse than the fact that I know that there are students here and elsewhere that don't feel safe, right? Um, you know, I'm going to meet with the family of a fourth grade student next week. Um, that family reached out to every school that their kid might go to in the future to see what we can do to keep them safe. And the sad reality of it is, is that, you know, every training that you go to for an awful event like that says that you are just trying to control the damage, right? Mm -hmm. So what it really comes down to is relationships. When you talked about that Upper Darby thing, that kid never got that handgun into our school because a kid told us they saw it, mm -hmm. right? We've had, you know, time after time where usually it's not something awful like a mass shooting, but, you know, when somebody just pops into the office and says, hey, look, man, I was never here. You don't remember who I am, but you should probably go to Stairway 3 after lunch today because there might be a fight there. We go, we stand there, we see the guy that's got that look on his face, and then we can talk to him. And so those relationships are how we keep people safe. And we also got to remember that safety is more than physical, right? You know, if you're getting picked on or bullied or harassed, you know, we need to make sure that people are treated the same no matter who they are. We need to make sure that the, that the women in our school are treated with respect. We have to make sure that people feel proud of their religion and who they love and their abilities or disabilities. And the more that we do that, the more that we spread that word, and the more that you guys as students trust us to help you instead of hiding problems from us, then the safer we're going to be. Mm -hmm. So before we move on, um, the Narstown High did receive a grant towards finishing the, the turf field. Um, we personally had a conversation about this yesterday, but um, where do you see the athletics department going? And then also, to add on to that, we also they talked about the five-year technology plan. So can you give us your opinion on that too as well? Sure. So I think athletics, I think one of the biggest things that we have to do is to sell the school, right? You know, when you when I was in high school, it didn't matter how great of an athlete you were. There was not a lot of people recruiting you, right? You know, Catholic schools back then in this area couldn't win a state title. Um, private schools weren't as prevalent as they are now. But that game has changed. You know, there's 10-year-olds that are getting nationally ranked as far as how good they are at basketball. And those 10-year-olds then get recruited much like people do into college. Those parents want to make sure that their kids get a great education. We can provide them that. We can provide them that for free. And we can provide them with top-notch athletic facilities, including the stadium that's going to take a big step towards completion. So I think athletics, you know, I think we're moving in the right direction. I think Mr. Palladino has done a lot of work with the middle schools, trying to get some, you know, some camps and some training down there. That way our student athletes come to us better prepared. Uh, and then, you know, when you talk about technology, uh, I think that that comes together with what I just said. You know, we, we are going to be able to have a ton of technology in this building. There is nothing that you as a student won't be able to get here that you would get anywhere else. In fact, we're going to be able to offer you some things here in the North End Area High School that you would not be able to get if you went to certain private schools, certain Catholic schools, if you went to the public schools down the street. That's not knocking those schools. That's just to say that when I'm talking to a sixth grade family and they want to know why they should send their kid here, I want to know what their reason is why they can't. Mm -hmm. Because there's nothing they can tell me, oh, my kid won't have this wrong. we got top-notch facilities, we've got top-notch education, we've got top-notch teachers, and we've got you guys. So they should come here and be happy and be proud to be an Eagle. All right, well, we would like to thank you, Mr. Ross, for joining us today on, a, on this interview. Um, well, we hope you have a good day, but we're going to continue. If you would like to stick around, we're going to talk about the shooting that happened in Santa Fe, if you uh, have an opinion on that. So um, on May 18th, 17-year-old uh, Demetrius Pagortis opened fire on fellow students at Santa Fe High School in Texas, killing 10 and injuring 13. Among the 10, eight were students and two were teachers, including Sabika Shaki, an exchange student from Pakistan. This comes three months after the shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida that killed 17. Unlike in Santa Fe, Nicholas Cruz, Parkland shooter, was not a current student of the school. 
Unlike Cruz, who was an automatic weapon, Pagortasis was armed with Remington Model 8, 870 shotgun and a 3800 caliber revolver. Both guns were legally owned with by his father, who did not want to comment on how his son got his hands on them. The shooting began around 7.40 that morning in the art complex, a building of four classrooms and interior hallways. Apparently, he walked into one of the classrooms, pointed to one of the students, and said, I'm going to kill you. Students then barricaded themselves in closets, but the door was shot through. He briefly left the room, causing students to leave the closet and attempt to barricade that door, but he promptly returned and shot one of them in the chest. When they engaged with the shooter, uh, one of the officers was critically wounded. Um, he threatened to shoot the f police officers and they continued to fire shots. They engaged for about four minutes before he surrendered and was shot. The entire affair lasted for 25 minutes. So, uh, Mr. Roth, this obviously is a, a huge problem and we, we kind of talked about this in the last segment, but um, when you saw this break on the headlines, it's not. do you see it as a surprise anymore or more of of like... Here we go again. Like, up oh, uh, happened again. And sadly, it's here we go again. Uh, it's not a surprise anymore. It's it's a, a sad fact of life right now. Mm -hmm. um, Aliyah, do you have any anything to say about this situation? Um, yeah. When I hear about school shootings or any type of mass shootings, it really I've been so passionate about gun safety and like the Second Amendment since like the sixth and seventh grade. And I wrote like a whole essay about how the law needs to change. How I think it needs to change, anyways. So I didn't hear like another school shooting and how so many innocent people were killed for just going to school, a place where they should feel safe. It makes me so mad, like more than upset, like I'm just mad that nothing's changing within our laws. And like my little brother, I don't want him to worry about going to elementary school or middle school, like to new schools and have to worry about people coming in and trying to like end his life. Like it's scary for me to think about for myself, but I don't want like children to think about it. So it just makes me really mad. Yeah, about you, Michael? That, that, that is the one surprising thing that hasn't been done. There has been no change. Um, yeah, the, the students are trying to make a stand, but you see these athletes who are trying to do their thing with the national anthem and the football association setting across their guidelines with saying, oh, if you do this, you're going to be fined. If you're going to do this, you're going you're gonna to have to be suspended. But that's talking about one thing with athletes that have a say in this world. Us students don't have that big voice mm -hmm. we have nothing to like we have nothing to go off of when when this happens all the kids in the United States probably have in the back of their head why what about our school like how's our school like right and so now it's like what is the government going to do what what are they waiting for mm -hmm. because this it's it's too much and in three months for two massive ones to happen and and the many more before it it's it's scary so i just i just hope they do something very soon yeah same because i feel like they want to protect the guns more than protect kids or people's lives and to think about like how you don't want to change that were in so long ago like i feel like when they wrote these amendments they weren't thinking about what could happen so many years in the future like they weren't here to know like oh mass shootings do happen and they're going to happen more often than they should so, it just needs to be tweaked a little bit, the law, I think, anyways. All right, so um, let's move on to a little bit happier of a topic. Um, so, recently, the Elmo Park Zoo. Um, Mr. Roth, have you been to the Elmo Park Zoo? Before? I have. My daughters love it. It's great. Um, so, recently, they have become um, certified with Autism uh, Center, an Autism Center. Um, so, this kind of means that they are going to be able to attend to anybody with um, a, a disability or um, people that are socially awkward. Anything that has to do with it, um, they became the world's first in the world. So on May 7th, the zoo um, announced this. Al Zone, the zoo CEO and executive, executive director, stated that the interaction will be rewarding to kids and families. Um, the workers received the certification. Um, through classes that taught them how to interact and understand kids with learning disabilities. The zoo also renovated to accommodate all needs for everyone attending to visit the animals. In the opinions of many, is is fast becoming an alternative 
to the Philadelphia Zoo for many in the Narstown area. Not only is it close to the community, but it has become a source of employment for many students from our high school who work or have worked in the past. To help give back, the zoo provided support to our high school cheerleaders who received a donation towards their trip to Florida for nationals. Now that they are innovating for the future and well-being of the zoo, they want it to be a place that brings together the whole town. So if you guys do not know about the zoo, it's located at 1661 Harding Boulevard, right near Eisenhower Middle School and right down the street from the baseball fields on Sturgis Street. Um, a little history on it, it opened July 4th, 1924 and now covers 16 acres and includes 300 animals and 100 species. With the increasing population, some of these species are now endangered and want to feel loved. So now that leaves the question, are you willing to make an effort in the community to involve others and make everyone come together? So, Ali, have you been to the zoo? I have been to the zoo. I used to have a like a membership. My mom got us membership when we were younger, so we'd go all the time, like at least once a week, and just go around and look at the animals. Like we used to name them because you know I just thought it was really adorable. But I really think it's great that they got certified for autism, like and they get to help people and because there's like a lot in this in the school district that I see. Anyways, like you see the kids downstairs, they're always so happy. So I think like now if they have people that can like help them even more in like a public area like the zoo I think it's just really cute and adorable like I don't know it just makes my <laughs> heart really warm makes me really happy what about you Mr. Roth? I think it's great I think it's just uh you know Al Zone he I've only met him a few times but he's definitely somebody who cares about the community and I think something like this just shows uh you know what places like the zoo and you know whether it's a public you know enterprise or a private business what they can do to you know kind of build morale of a neighborhood you know right. that, that that zoo is known far outside of Norris town uh, and I think it's uh, it's a great point of pride um, so also adding to this um, have you been on the zipline adventure at the at the zoo I have not been on I've been wanting to go on it for like since it opened but you know I'm a busy child so I haven't had the chance yet but I really want to I, I totally recommend it I've been on it two times one through the Narstown High School which we did a, a Captain C builder something 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 <laughs> other than I don't know what it was but we went with the, with Mr. Palladino and uh, we did it with the soccer team and I'll admit it was it was probably an hour and a half adventure and mm -hmm. it was enjoyable it, it's just soothing like to see all the nature and everything and and zip lining in general, like not everybody goes zip lining in the canyon or everything. So, right. Um, but uh, I know Alzone personally, and he he's a good man. Um, he always thinks of the the community and and just just what he has plans with the expansion across the river and then bringing in the giraffes and zebras. It's 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 gonna be it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. I feel like it's gonna become better than the Philadelphia Zoo one day. Honestly. So, along with the, the good news and helping out the community, recently on May 20th, the National Honor Societies in, of Norristown Area High School, Methacton, and Plymouth White Marsh came together at Herbner Park in Collegeville and hosted their annual 5K run to raise money. This year, we chose to donate the proceeds to the ASPCA. The American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, or ASPCA, is an organization that saves animals from cruelty. They find animals in abusive situations and save them from the horror. This is good. This is a good cause to support because animal abuse is everywhere. And if you have a pet, you could, you could imagine if it were forced to breed in a puppy mill, or maybe a dog in a fighting ring forced to fight other dogs for mere entertainment. The money raised at this five at this year's five K is going to help those poor enslaved dogs, and that's something we can all be glad about. What's unique about this event is that it wasn't just a run. The NHS added the option to walk a mile. The cost to participate was $20 and $5 extra for an on-the-day registration. Approximately 50 runners and walkers showed up, and even some brought their dogs to show their support for the ASPCA. Families showed up, as well as many students from each school, helping with the event and participating in the run. And we also had some local people who wanted to support the cause. We also received support from many local businesses in the form of monetary donations and products like bananas and oranges from Arnold's. This, along with the runners, allowed us to raise around $1,500, all of which is going to the ASPCA and their endeavors. We believe that this year's 5K was the best one yet because of the addition of another school of other schools, and we hope to do even better in the future. So, Michael, have you ever had like an interaction with the ASPCA and like the dogs and the other animals that they have there? Um, I actually, my aunt has. Uh, 
she has adopted uh, three of them. And and when you go to her house and you, and you just see like the terror that they have for not for seeing people because people is what causes them to go into that fear mm-hmm. and that state of mind. And so when you when you go around them and you see the terror when they see a stranger for the first time, it's it's sad. Like any anybody that dan- and endangers a, an animal, it, I feel like they're sick. Like yeah, an animal is an I feel is like another person. Like mm-hmm. your dog is probably one of your best friends and. And just to endanger that is, it's sickening. Uh, Mr. Roth, did, have you had any relationships with the ASPCA? I have not, uh, but my my mother-in-law is a big, big animal lover, and uh, that's rubbing off onto my girls. So mm-hmm. I think I'm really just counting down minutes until our, our time is coming. Yeah, when I was around four or five or six years old, me and my uh, parents, we went to the um, SPCA because we wanted a dog, and uh, the looks on their, like, the dog's faces, you could tell that they were scared. Like, a lot of them were skinny because the, they haven't been fed as well as they should be, but, like, some dogs are just really happy to be in contact with other people. Like, if they're being petted or they're being fed, they just look so happy, and, like, the dog that we got, we got him because he instantly fell in love, in love with my dad. So they had like that first connection. So we brought him home and he was just so happy to have like a bed because we got him like a little dog bed. We had him to create and like had all this food and toys for him. And he just looked so happy. And we, I remember we had to get him neutered and we had to bring him back to the SPCA. And he thought that we were like giving him back. So like he wasn't going to come back. And it was just really sad because he was crying. Like you could hear the, the dog crying. And it was just really sad for me to sort of to think about like the dogs and how they feel and this, um, like situation when they're being so mistreated, I think it's really sad, and I'm happy that we got to raise so much money for the ASPCA so they can help um, the dogs and other animals like to be loved and fed, and just have like a good relationship with other dogs. All right, so I know that's the cause, but did, have you ever participated in this in the 5K or ha- did you do this one or? Not the 5K. Um, Aaliyah does not run, <laughs> so <laughs> no, I don't do runs, but. I have donated and helped out with other in other ways. Like I have given food. I have um, hung out with dogs in the other shelters, and it's just really nice to see that people are doing more like runs um, to help out animals and raise money. So I think it's really great. Uh, I I did participate in this one, and I'll say the course was very confusing. <laughs> um, Jensen, who's going to be joining us later, uh, me and him went the wrong way. Just to say that <laughs> we uh, we probably added about five minutes of time onto our course. Uh, the the planning was there. It was just uh, the students who were who were on the course directing didn't have a very good idea, but uh, I, I enjoyed it. Um, I feel like running is a good way to uh, as a stress reliever. Um, yeah. If you have a lot of stress, work out and, and running it. It's probably the best thing to do. You, you just bikes. take all your anger out on <laughs> all your anger out, and you, you just can free your mind. Mm-hmm. Um, Mr. Roth, do you run? No. <laughs> <laughs> I should, but I do not. <laughs> yeah, same. So now to finish up the segment, we're going to go to Jensen for the, the upcoming schedule. Uh, so just so everyone knows, the end of the year is approaching fast, and everyone should be aware of what's coming up. There are only four weeks of school left, which primarily consists of testing. Next week, starting on the 4th, our senior exams. It lasts from June 4th to June 7th. And if you're a senior, you take your finals earlier than the underclassmen. Uh, the next week, on Thursday the 14th, is the graduation. This week is also when underclassmen exams start. And they start on Wednesday with periods 1 and 3. On Friday are 2 and 4. And then next week on the 18th are exams periods 7 and 8. And finally, on the 19th are exams 5 and 6, which is also our last day. Everyone should be aware that the exam days are shortened days and that dismissal will be around 1240. Is that correct, Mr. Roth? That is correct. And uh, can't wait to get to graduation. <laughs> Good. All right, so thank you, Jensen, for that schedule. And uh, we would like to thank everybody who's listened to our second podcast. Um, this is the Gifted Class, and just because we're gifted doesn't mean we're smart. <laughs>